Hello, I'm John Walter. I'm an artist and I'm the curator of Shonky, The Aesthetics of Awkwardness, which is an exhibition that came about through Hayward Touring Exhibitions. Uh, there was an open call for a curatorial open and I applied and was selected to put this project together. And Shonky is an exhibition of 14 artists and architects that bring us together a range of work uh, made in sculpture, painting, installation, video, and combines people from different parts of the world and different generations. So the dictionary definition of the word shonky means something corrupt or bent, and it may be that the word is derived from a Yiddish word meaning uh, peddler. But it, so it could be a pejorative, and it, it can be used as a slur to mean something that's bad or off. But I'm using the word to mean something that has an elegance to it that maybe wasn't its original purpose, but does something else brilliantly. And it might be that it's precarious or imbalanced or awkward, and that has use for thinking about artistic things. This is the third iteration of Shonky, which has previously been at the MAC in Belfast and the DCA in Dundee. And they're very different spaces to the exhibition rooms in Bury. They're white cube spaces, they're very contemporary modern buildings, and Bury is very exciting because it's a Victorian museum, and the exhibition is adapted to the architecture here. Shonky is an exhibition that conforms to my idea of maximalism, which really means something in which uh, the parts are embedded within each other to make a bigger whole. And so although the exhibition is made up of work by lots of different artists, it's also a larger masterwork. And I'm combining things in different ways to adapt to the architecture of the building. And each time the show moves, it reforms and new relationships between the works are made. As Shonky's travelled, certain works have stayed with one another and certain things have moved around. For example, in Berry, it's the first time that Plastique Fantastique have been positioned next to the nachos, the floor nachos by Justin Favela. And these new kinds of combinations throw up new relationships, new meanings, new visual equations, and this is exciting. Also, as Shonky has travelled, my understanding of the meaning has changed. And it's very much grown out of my own practice as an artist and my understanding of the production values that I'm using, which are not slick. And I think that there's an even more nuanced meaning of Shonky that has grown out of this project, which could lead to a further exhibition. In curating Shonky, I've really thought about it as an extension of my practice, which involves a certain quota of different media and that involves video, sculpture, painting, architectural model and it's a lot about collapsing pictorial and architectural space together to make hybrids and the work needs to be distributed in a certain way to generate certain atmospheres, certain relationships and certain feelings and there's a critical amount of work that we needed and we've had to rearrange the work between the two spaces in Bury to generate these feelings again and each time it moves that's an exciting new set of possibilities. The way I've arranged the work grows out of my interest in appropriation art and particularly David Sally and work that was made in the 1980s that combined together different pictorial languages into the same surface and that's an unusual way to think about architecture or spatial design and it's really about creating a series of juxtapositions in two and three dimensional space that can charge one another. During research into my PhD, I was working within spatial design to think about how architecture could act as a curator rather than a curator acting as a curator. And this led me to thinking about lo-fi and the work of people like Brian Griffiths who were using cardboard and a kind of cardboard aesthetic to build their work, and also about Philip Guston and bad painting with a capital B, which is much more about bad drawing and uh, an alternative to the classical. But Shonky goes further than that and extends the discussion by embedding it in a broader understanding of the role that craft and the hand play for artists in making their work, but also for audiences in understanding the work they're looking at. And so in Nikki de Sanfal's models of the little camel and the gorilla, or in Justin's nachos, these are not things that are so complex that we can't understand how they're made. And that doesn't mean they're dumb, but it means that they're somehow democratic. 
So although this is a large exhibition, there is no definitive exhibition on Shonki. There are a lot of artists that we could have included that didn't. There was a lot of work made in clay, for example, that could almost be another exhibition in its own right. But I would have loved to have borrowed a Kippenberger painting, which is very hard to get hold of. So we've included the ghost of Kippenberger somehow in the work of Kosovo von Bonin, who's another artist from Cologne working in a similar capitalist realist vein that comes through Sigmar Polka. I also would have loved to have had a model by Hundert Wasser, and there's no work in this country other than a few prints in the V&A. So we travelled to Austria and photographed the work and repurposed it ourselves, and that's actually turned out much better in the end. All the works in the show encapsulate the Shonky ethos in different ways, but Louise Fishman's painting seemed to encapsulate for me something about the way that the artist can be a detective on their own hand, which is exciting and very much part of shonkiness. So in paintings like the one behind me, the way they're made is quite slow and there's not a lot of reworking, but the editing is made somehow through the inclusion of time in the editing process. So she'll make a mark and look at it and contemplate her next move. And somehow this appropriation of the accident is very important to shonkiness.